Maybe if you can impress her, she'll actually stick to her, her words. Correct. Now, however, something more immediate and less uh, talkative has decided to show up. There's a storm, my yes. Bruin. The storm. Hello. Yes, and quite a storm it will be. Due to the fact that the soil around here is exceptionally dry. So, as someone who's familiar with how, how these processes work, when soil gets really dry, it absorbs water less good-like. So, big floods cause big problems. Because it's, you know, water just starts heaping up. Flash flood. Mm -hmm. Yep. Flash flood, as they like to call it. Flash what you gonna flood. do? Additionally, the Racken Lake will probably eventually start to flood as well, because as it becomes replenished by the water of its own surface area and the nearby areas, the underwater rivers that usually take care of its drainage are probably not going to work for long. Hmm. Simply put, any simulation that tries to simulate what's gonna happen if a bunch of water just falls down is like, yep, gonna suck. Someone should do something. How about we get some shovels going and do an irrigation channels? So, since your boss is a crisis management kind of guy, after dinner, after he's had a moment to think about what the hell's going on, how to handle this, we're like a day or so later. Don't worry about it. From last time, you had your little conversation, you went on home in the dark, felt good about yourself for one night before it's like, yeah, remember that flood that's happening? We should probably worry about that too. Being a crisis management kind of guy, he immediately provides you with some, some, some helpful tips on what should be done, if you feel like it. I mean, if you feel like you can do it on your own, he'll just he'll just pleasantly watch from the background. I'm listening. I would like yeah, yeah. to Yes, please. So, for, so as mentioned, um, the, the normal water runoff is this underwater river. You could indeed try to dig some channels to try and move water there. That would take a large amount of manpower and effort, but would allow to protect the city. Like, the the farmsteads are easily replaceable. They're made of local materials, like wooden crap, easily rebuilt if it comes down to it. The city, however, is a more administrative center with more technological gizmos and what's-its. So that getting flooded is a, not as good. More homeless people, more problems. Also, the railway might get damaged, and the train, and that wouldn't be good, because you can't really leave all that easily without a train. Correct. Another cause for concern is I mean... that there... There is a precedent for people uh, disassembling the rail track behind them and mm -hmm. reassembling it in front of the train. That's that's quite a way to do it. <laughs> Another major cause for concern is that this particular installation's uh, broadcast signal requires there to be a special repeater tower that's located on the goal, which might take damage from such a storm. It wasn't built for them, let's put it like that. So you might lose your uh, connection to the starport if that goes a bit nasty. Another thing for concern is that someone should take inventory of things that are important and need to be removed from town in case of emergency, like anything that needs to be moved up there. Someone needs to drive around picking people up off their farmsteads, taking care of that and all that. Uh, assange the fears, get everyone ready to go, help them out. Uh, also, there's gonna you're going to have to deal with old people who are like, I don't want to go nowhere. I've made it through this in 50 years. And then they swim okay, the cane at you. goodbye. And I just turn around and leave. I'm not even going to try to persuade them. If they want to die, fair enough. I don't think that's going to make you very popular. <laughs> I know. He said, no, what am I supposed to bash them over the head? Maybe just use your people words? Say again? Maybe use your people words? I don't Listen, have people he words. He has a shotgun. He can just scare the water away. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> just, <laughs> just leave Granny to fight the, the coming flood. Oh my god, look at that alligator costume! <laughs> what a dork. What a bunch of dweebs. Little cuties. Patooties. Point is, there's plenty that needs to be taken care of that all of your skills will find some place of application. Correct. So, the question comes down to what does everyone want to manage? What do you want to do? What do you think you can do? What I would like to try and do is see if, in emergency, we can use the train to basically evacuate. So here's the... No, the yeah. Here's like the nuance of that. When you say, in the case of emergency evacuate, what, what are the parameters of the evacuation that you're thinking of? Load up the people. If there are people, there will be new homesteads. I'm... Why question is, you're saying evacuate the place in case things go a little bit haywire. The thing yeah. is, 
what is the timing of this? Like, what are your conditionals? When and why do you think it's too much to just not sit it out on the hill? If it's um, too much to sit it out on the hill. If okay. it shapes up to be even the hill is not going to help, the train might be the option. We'll just drive out sideways. Potentially. Well, the train does have a lot of capacity, but it doesn't have the capacity to evacuate an entire town. Actually, let me well, see if I can find a population number. In that, in that case, we'd better do it in advance if we actually have to do it. At the very least, having the train repaired and ready to go is a good idea, just for the safety's sake. I don't think this train can carry 30,000 people in one go. It can carry women and children or whatever they said at the Titanic. And men who are convincingly dressed as women. Well, that's not hot. That's not a very nice way to put it. Just like anyone who thinks that they're important enough. Just let them fight it out. Get, get, <gasps> but get everyone a rooster and have them fight it out with a cockfight, you know? It's going to be the Josh fight, except that it's going to be the rock and gore, goal uh, fight. We put <laughs> everybody in the pile, give, drop one knife in there, it's like, yes, <laughs> the last winner gets, the, the winner gets evacuated. <laughs> Actually, if they, if they kill enough people, they might level up enough that they will fight the fucking hurricane and <laughs> defeat it on their own. You know, while this is a very delightful way of getting around things, it also sounds horribly impractical and reliant on several mechanics that it may is. not apply to real it life. It is extremely horrible, yes. So, in that case, if the train is not a good idea, well, that's the first thing that I would like to take a look, because if we have to, it's better to have it and not need it rather than, you know, need it. What does everyone else feel like doing over the next few weeks? Um, I was thinking of either doing the inventory, the important stuff and things, or at least helping to try and get refugees somewhere safe setting up some kind of I don't know encampment Do on the ground okay so you're going to be helping organize the, 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 the necessary preparations up on the hill well you did find that bandit camp and the bandits are on your side so you could expand from there it wasn't a pretty good location to sit on a flood quick question do we have a topographical map of the area Dude, you literally have like a weather satellite and several pictures of the area, so yes. Okay. Find the highest location in the area and just try to set up there. If we can't fit everybody in one camp. I thought this was Lisa Gecko's little can. plan. Say again? I'm just saying, I was, I, was, I was asking other people what they wanted to do and how they Wait, wanted so, to do it. So do we know where... Like, So I'm guessing the... The direction the water's going to come from is from the, the lake. The the storm is coming from the northeast, but the big concern is that once it gets to Rackin Lake, it's going to fill up and it's going to make this massive flood that goes the other way. Yes. Okay. So we should probably start trying to like organize like flood barriers, probably. Yeah, sandbags. The sandbags, the trench, mm -hmm. like a just temporary trench. Can you do a temporary trench? I don't know. I think most trenches are temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's just like they don't need to be super duper durable. I feel like as long as we don't all drown and die, they need to hold the line. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Mm. Hold the line. All right then. I mean, like if we do have comms and everything, we can also like access Space Wikipedia. Get some resources to disseminate from there, and like maybe oh. phone an expert or something. I don't know if phoning an expert's gonna work because there's no instant communication between planets, and I don't know if there's gonna be a flood hydrolysis hydro hydrological mm. expert on this planet available. But hey, mm. who knows? Yep, it's something. I'm just trying to think of how big the barrier would need to be. I mean, you have a city of 30,000 people, of which a sizable population is probably ready and able to help. Because then probably need to... Hmm. Probably need to go, like... Jesus, that's like, big. Like, pull them in, like, closer to the city center. We can maybe bar between the buildings the more sturdy ones, so they can be, like, part of the barrier. Oh, so when I actually start and... integrating the buildings into the... Ooh. Right, and also, like, if there are any, you know, people who just 
flat out do not want to leave. I was born in this hill and I'm going to die on it. Then, like, at least give them a pamphlet with how they can, like, help themselves. Like, maybe don't hide in the basement because water goes down. <laughs> so, you know, like, at least make an effort. All right. Talk All right. Them. So the question really comes down to who's doing what, because we already know that uh, our good friend Lisa is going to be organizing the, the the movement of citizenry and necessary equipment. Hmm. Um, I guess you need to start planning like how we're going to set out yeah. the defenses. If it's going to be just like one massive wall, or is it going to be like multi-layered? With some reconnaissance or survival, I'd say that you can start uh, organizing the necessary, you know, the walling, taking care of that. And if you're, since you're mm. smart enough to look up some information and get some assistance, you can give yourself a boon on that. Get advantage, as it were. Mm. Also, I'm looking at, like, the settings for this, and there are so many more. Ooh. <laughs> like, there's, like, what is, it, what is the modifier in a statistic that is zero? What is advantage called? What is disadvantage called? Show law field. Hide rage bands. Ugh, man, going places. So, so can I roll that now? Reconnaissance. It's up to whichever one you, you think works best. Yeah, so how much, how plus is a boon? Is it just one or two? Um, if you, cl no, 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 a boon is that you straight up roll an extra die, it's advantage. Oh. Roll an extra die, keep the two highest. So roll type advantage. Yes. Okay. Miss Lisa Gecko can give me some administrative benefits. Okay. As you decide to organize a proper evacuation, making sure to exploit the natural terrain instead of having everyone just bump into each other, get angry, and then get a massive traffic jam where everyone's just honking the horns. Excellent. Well, so far things are going quite smoothly. Good trenches are getting dug, exploiting the natural curvature of the land. As you manage to find a way to, you know, uh, the, the the way everything is built, there is a natural slant towards the east. You exploit that in your design so that you don't have to dig quite as much and the water will naturally try to veer away from the town when it comes up from the lake. Which is, again, the real problem with the lake is that it's a massive funnel that funnels in water from a large area and then just focuses it on the city. Not so much the water itself, that's the, the, the big problem there. Um, all right, well... I think Mr. Asimov was wanting to investigate some trains. All right. Okay. Cool. You can give me some mechanic in that regard. As you decide right. to make sure you properly set to go and can survive the incoming storm. Hopefully. What's the modifier for this? Standard? Standard. Use your int. You're kind of winging Let's it here. This... Let's see if this thing is salvageable. Gosh. Nine. Impressive. <clears throat> Through a concentrated effort, you manage to get the train up, set up to both endure the storm, like you reinforce the building, you get some people to help out with that. You set the train up so that it can immediately get going if it turns out that the storm is worse than expected, and everyone has to move immediately. Erica Yang, what do you want to do on this first delightful little week? Hello. So we have uh, Lisa on the... What? Lisa is, getting, Lisa is getting yeah. inventory sorted out, like how much food is needed and everything for everyone, mm -hmm. um, where to best set up, getting some of the tents set up for everyone, you know, counting how many women and children there are who will probably be going there compared to dudes who might be hanging out at home trying to keep their property intact. Mm -hmm. uh, Asma is doing what? This is for my own benefit because audio processing is a bitch. So, just so I don't double it. This, uh, I've I'm just helping out with the uh, digging out the trenches and ditch digging. Up, yeah, trench mm -hmm. defense digging. Digging trenches. So if we have inventory in the yeah, hmm. I can do outreach because they do have like diplomat at least some of it to get the more you know out of reach places. I was uh, I was I, I was going to mention that you know the people in town might be aware, but. <laughs> Yeah, so I would like to focus on that. Like, informing people that something is coming, how they can prepare, and where they can go if they would, you know, cool. like to not drown. Cool. If they're stubborn, here's a pamphlet. 
You can use Diplomat or Persuade for that, but you're going to have to use your Endurance instead of whatever you normally use because this is a lot mm -hmm. of talking and it's going to start wearing on you. Yeah. Like you're saying the same few lines over and over to everyone and you usually get the same few <laughs> complaints. It it wears on a person. So, okay. Uh, persuade, Endurance, anything on roll difficulty and type? Uh, no. Uh, we'll say yeah. that Draven is driving you around for this one. Oof. Oh, it's it's a that's... tough... Don't forget, everyone gets one free reroll every, every session if you really want to use it. <laughs> I would not mind that reroll. And then go ahead and spend it. Yeah, to help people not die. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Yeah. Man, so far these results really? are looking pretty spiffy. Mm -hmm. Handsome. Mm -hmm. Your efforts pay off as you manage to get some of the fringe communities to at the very least take this seriously and get them mm -hmm. prepared. As time goes on and the week passes by and so does another week, it takes a while to get everything set up. You can start to tell that there is indeed a storm coming, because at the distance this ever-looming cloud grows closer. As the the second week begins to reach its end, you start to hear the distant lightning and thunder. Um, there's not much time to take care of big preparations, but you have taken care of a lot. The town is looking well reinforced on all sides, to as best as you think is manageable within the time frame you have. The question is where are you going to be when the actual storm hits is now a pressing concern. Are there any areas that will, like, need bolstering that we can know just from, you know, the time we spend there? I mean, I don't think there's much we can do in the heat of the moment. I mean, a storm's a storm. We can't really just stand around with umbrellas. We've, done, we've basically <laughs> reinforced the town as much best we can. We just need to get everyone mm. to some kind of high ground and hope everything survives. So you're going to go for a, a big push towards the end, huh? Keep at it until the end. Have we taken stock of supplies? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I did. Lisa, Got specifically... <laughs> Inventory and people. Sure we have enough supplies and everything, and Good. all important stuff is accounted for. Now, one more important thing. Does everybody have enough fresh water? Mm. Because this shit is going to be washing off all the gunk from all the planes. Um, here's it a... might be unsafe to drink. Now, there isn't enough water in town to take care of that. Like, the, moving the water there is going to be a problem. I mean, the Racken Lake would be all right if you don't mind and the, the risk of the water getting contaminated by all the gunk over time. There is, of course, one option available to you. The Vorstatten Estate has a massive backstock of water bottles and all that kind of crap in the basement where the fusion reactor is. If you want to, you could share that. I assume the owner would not mind, so yes, I would like to. Oh, he's to he's leaving this 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 rescue effort to you, since you seem to be doing such a, such a stand up job at it. Yes. Don't let him ruin your uh, uh, arousing success. Yes. Setting up at the estate sounds like a good idea. I mean, it's a well fortified location. There's probably some room for the townsfolk. I don't know if there's enough for everybody just in the building itself, but. At the very least, we can set up tents and whatever. And the forest out in the state is located on a small rise, yes. And he can definitely get most of these employees in the farms inside. Because he does own, like, two farms in the adjacent field, so... <clears throat> it is going to be amusing if we ever get a new custom race called Townsfolk. <laughs> Why would it be it's a... Just... <laughs> Sentient buildings. <laughs> I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you props for points. Yeah, you know. And there's a south class, the warehouse. <laughs> I can contain all of the things. Yes. On 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 a full moon, a house turns into a warehouse. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> what does your dog it's mean? Does it just become a person? Like there's just this massive foundation lying in the middle of nowhere? What, turn back when it stops being a full moon. what a freaky beaky world we live in. What a freaky beaky no. world. No, you don't understand here. 
Oh, no, it turns into an Amazon warehouse. Turns into a warehouse, yes. Flood safety. Let's have a lot. Oh, man. Ooh. Like, I legit went to space Google. And these are really freaking good tips, too. Like, hoard water in your bathtub for at least, you know, flushing and bathing. Though not of babies because lead. Don't go swimming. If caught on a flooded road, get out of the car quickly and move to higher ground. Wait. If you still have time to do this, move them to a higher floor. Turn off utilities if told so. Ooh. Turn your gas off, little plastic waters. Fill your gas tank. Ooh. Yum. I don't know how Hank Hill is going to respond to the fact that he has to turn off his propane tanks. <laughs> Here's how it Probably looks. It's only temporary, don't you worry. And there's also there like a, a bit on livestock. And there's also a little bit of li on livestock, which is also good because like we have had, uh, we have the Kians and also there's been other farms that are now defunct, but the livestock is probably still alive. So, Considering yeah. that part of this livestock has probably been here for a while, we're going to assume that they're probably rain resistant. <laughs> mm -hmm. They probably know what to do, or at the very least the ranchers know what to do with them. Yeah, yeah, I love the, I love I love it when I see a car get flooded away. There's something about it that always makes me giggle. <laughs> like well, I'm driving here. <laughs> get out of the way, water. Like you don't go here. Why are you swimming? Just like the idea of someone sitting behind the wheel, like waving his arm, going, get out of the way. <laughs> I'm trying to drive flood. Oh Karen. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, kids, so you're going to be hanging out at the base, at the safest place in town, hoping to wait this out. Um, as you do that, however, um, your your crisis management boss does feel like chiming in, which is... Um, he, he, I presume he like, led to the garage for this little demonstration. He slaps the pupper and goes, um, I don't want to intrude, but these things do have communicators in them. It might be beneficial to set one of them up near uh, the people... Up on the hill. Yes. That way, in case of emergency, we'll be able to communicate to some extent and coordinate. Uh, good. Probably be a good idea. Well, assuming it can work on the storm, because in the lightning it interferes a lot. It's better than not. Yes. Yeah, like Just saying that it might not work, but it's a good idea. Gives us a best case scenario. I mean, if if, if 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 all someone's going to contribute is that you shouldn't do it because it might not work, then you end up with very bad design no, I'm No, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it because it wouldn't work. I'm just saying that it, there might be problems with it. So just no, so no, no I'm talking, I'm, I'm referencing technology connections who made a video about, like, uh, why LED uh, stoplights would be a bad idea because, but sometimes hmm. they get frozen over. Like the mindset of so it can go, it can like compared to the old, it has one minor downside. So we should never ever switch or try to fix that downside. You know, the bad kind of thing. You know what? I'll just see if I could fire that video at some point. Please do. Minor downsides to solution are still better than the major downsides oh. dying from the fall. Well, yes. It's actually straight up in the video title. Here we go. The LED traffic light and the danger of, but sometimes. It's a really good video. Also, this guy always has really good closed captions, so go for it. Um, oh my god, owning a dragon pros and cons. I, I don't know if I need to know that. You get to brag. <laughs> Fly to work. Lifelong friend. Yeah. Let's all take a 20 minute break mid-session to go watch a video about <laughs> traffic light. You know, for all the cars that are over here. <clears throat> dragon might get bored waiting for you in the parking lot. I like stacking things when I'm bored, too. Dice towers are the blight of many a GM. So yes, your 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 boss is like, it might be a good idea to set up some to set up these cars with their transmitters. Yes, but I'll leave it to you. It might be useful to have these things around to you know ferry people around at your beck and call. <clears throat> we can park it there uh, before we settle down and hunker down for the storm. Everyone chill with that. 
think we don't necessarily need to park it right now. Just, just to set one up. Set Luis. One of the closed tops. Uh, probably one with the closed tops. That seems to be a more sensible thing to park out there. <laughs> Luis, who has been here the whole two weeks because she's monitoring the systems and all that, giving you uh, ge geological reports, making sure that our good friend Miss Erica visits all the proper buildings that she can detect from up high. I love her. <laughs> Thumb up. Um, eventually it comes with the report that uh, the storm seems to be picking up pace and there's not much time. If there's anything you want to do, now's the time. So if you want to get any fresh hot dogs, you better get them all while they're still not soaked with water. <laughs> I mean, what is left to do? Uh, the radio tower was one thing that we still needed to deal with. Well, that'll probably be afterwards, if it's damaged at all, because there's not much you can realistically do without some fancy tech. Mm. I mean, you can try to disassemble it, but th that's a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. It's probably a bit more work than is necessary. Yeah. I suppose that could keep up the morale, just in general. Mm. <laughs> Um, as you take care of this, you can definitely tell that the spirit, uh, the, the house was kind of calm at first. They're, over the weeks, they get increasingly more nervous. Uh, let me pull up their names. Gosh, I love that this PDF is actually kind of sluggish in places. I don't know why. I think it just insists on loading with too many assets. Uh, particularly Tex and Louise are getting nervous. The two of them are not hardened, shall we say? So the fact that there's this big, scary storm coming causes, like, toward the last few days, Luis is, is all twitchy and like, what can we do? What can we do? We gotta do something. We can't just sit around and eat a sandwich. I mean, I could eat a sandwich. You probably were. Can't she was complaining about it during lunch. Hmm. Wait, I'm thinking. If there's any, like, busy work... That can be good as a distraction, just to keep the people from, you know, freaking panicking. That could be good. Or, like, maintaining reports on what has been done and, you know, the expectations and stuff. Golly. Yeah? I get you. I get you. You'll figure something out. Fine. I mean, to be fair, this is one of those tacky noble houses. There's probably those dumb little puzzles you can solve. <laughs> Or some paperwork she can she can look at. Just you know, make sure make sure everything is straightened out. Let's Do it in triplicate so that we have backups. <laughs> Shadow puzzles around. Find the secret library under the floor. Oh man. Hey, maybe you should maybe you should look into the offer by this fine Nigerian prince. Ah, for some reason, this this police That's station it. connects directly into a museum. <laughs> Why? <laughs> that is so legit. Well, you see, it wasn't always a police station. At some point, it was the house of the curator. <clears throat> he sold it to the police for reasons unknown. It's like, but the mm. police doesn't... It's the, the, the government owns... But it, this is a... What? And it's not There's even like a... And, and it's not even a secret door in the police station. It's just like right next to the storage co cabinet. Just like a door that leads into the museum. <laughs> Directly into a into a sarcophagus for no reason. No one ever asks questions. <laughs> Marvelous. The day has come. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see how things work out for you. You've taken your preparations and you've been extra careful and cautious. With a little bit of luck, this will be a nice no-brainer. Which is to say that I'm going to give you a boon for being extra cautious and judicious with your actions. And we're going to see how all those bonuses add up. You better get lucky. Oh, oh fuck. Not that. Double sixes. Damn. That's good. I'm doing two thumbs up. On the last few days, you take care of the final preparations. You finish up anything you can and take care of everything that needs to happen. As the storm comes in, so does the sound become loud. It is. You know, when Luis was selling you how bad the storm was, you didn't quite get it, but now that it's getting close, it's like this massive stampede of horses that is constantly in the distance. It's like a wall of rain coming right towards you, this huge depression. Like a big set of clouds that are tripping over themselves, raining along the way. Scary. It is quite scary. 
Because at one point, it's bright daylight, and then a few moments later, as the cloud pulls over the mansion, mm -hmm. it's just, like, pitch black. The rain pounds outside. You're all huddled up. Uh, power isn't going to go out, because the reactor's, like, right under the building. And this building is made with fusion sealed stone, so not not a single chance of leakages in those walls. Mm. As you sit by and wait for things to pass by, is there anything you do? Because this is probably something that would wear on the nerves if you just try to sit it out rough and tough. Playing checkers is always good, or cards for that matter. Yeah. Stories, oh, oh, like along with the cards. Aren't you even slightly curious if your suit can sustain inside this heavy rain? <laughs> it was built for the atmospheric pressure of between 1 and 0, so probably yes. <clears throat> hey, I'm just saying. David, David like, throws his car. I'm just saying. I just think that if you tried a little harder and went out... Just come on, man. Just do a lap of the building and show us all what that thing can do. Oh, my God. I Fine. I well, if you... If, you uh, if I go missing, uh, look for me in uh, Oz. <laughs> I'm gonna go and crash on some witch. Uh, does your suit come equipped with any particular night vision or like light amplification modules? Uh, I don't believe it does. Although I did go outside, so uh, on the space station, so I assume it does have at least a flashlight. Going outside is like walking into a curtain of of glitter and glim, because every water droplet reflects the light that you're emitting. Mm -hmm. It's really annoying. Yes, it is. Hard wind wipers. <laughs> Gosh, what would they be like in, in, a, in a future setting? Would it be like the glass refreshes itself and just smooth? Mm, that'd be a cool kind of way to do it. Point is, hell rainy outside. The the soil beneath your feet has at this point soaked up a little bit of water. So every uh, step you take, you squish into it. Moist. It's hard to hear anything to the point that you probably want to turn off your exterior sound uh, modules. Yes. At that point, you suddenly hear something over the intercom on your suit from Louise saying that there's a, a big old tornado starting to build up. Oh, god dang. As in, Where is it exactly? As in the space, the space pictures from space mm -hmm. have wow. picked up on a huge circle, like a cone shape that's beginning to form near uh, a cross. It's the city directly south of Forstan Estate. Oh, shit. The people there were able to... Well, they're not, like, on the big hill. They're, they're mostly located on some smaller hills in the area, which you deem safe enough, and probably are safe enough for just a flash flood and some heavy winds. Mm. But this tornado might be a problem. Town's gonna go. Uh, how many people are there? At the across at across. Across, yeah. yes. You know what? Uh, let's see. Well, you don't have admin. <coughs> I guess every anyone inside who's like probably hearing this because it's all over the little local inter intercom. Um, I think that anyone with admin would be able to remember how many people were there. The big problem with Encross is that there were a bunch of sick and injured people who you just couldn't reasonably transport over to Rock and Gold without taking up way more time than you otherwise would. Mm -hmm. So while you did dig them in, those people are probably in more risk than anyone. Mm -hmm. Like, we're talking bedridden people that I you... I they don't have Harkin hmm? sellers. I don't no. suppose they have Harkin sellers. They might, but a little help never hurts, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, we do have a spare car. Yeah. I'll head over there. If anything, I'll just tie myself to the biggest rock. If you need help? Like, I can go as well. Yeah. You have power armor. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Neither do the people there. Drave, Drave, Drave chimes in. It's like, well, we need someone to drive the car. We need someone to drive these dang things in the first place, right? Hmm. We got three cars left. So, the more we have, the yes. more we can take. <clears throat> Autopilot's um, not going to work in this. Uh, fair enough. Uh, some of them are self-driving, though. If not all. I believe all of them. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, Would you I trust them in this weather? Yeah. Probably not. Your choice. 
Uh, I guess if we have three cars and there's a lot of people, maybe we'll be able to do at least one trip. So. Yeah. yeah. It's better than us all just sitting on our hands here. We might as well make ourselves useful. Mm. Yes. All right. I'm down, I'm down for joining train. too, because French community. You load yourself into the vehicles and set out into the rain. It is hard to see too far ahead, and the muddied road is slippery and not that easy to navigate. The Vorstadt in the States, little asphalt, fusion seals, stone makes for an easy trip right up to the dirt road, but from there, you're kind of on your own. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm honestly scared to ask, but does anyone here have any drive skill to, to, to pave the path, as it were? Blaze a trail through all this mud? Drive? I am trained, but I'm at zero. Oh. I thought no one was left with drive after Max left, but... <laughs> I guess between the lot of you, you would have, together with... Uh, what's his name? Dravid. You would have enough people to manage three cars to drive somewhat safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I, mean, I, I can definitely give it a crack, but I don't have a license. <laughs> You'll be fine, probably. I'm not legally allowed to drive one of these. Hope everybody's okay with that. <laughs> Let me actually see like how good these cars are. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. I mean, they... Even if you swerve, the wind is going to push you back, so it evens out. It's fine. Oh, these things have like an autopilot of skill level 3. Jesus. So yeah. they're better than any of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they know where they're going. Like, considering most of us are at zero drive, they're better than all of us combined. Yeah, nice. The cars drive you with some slight assistance. It's it's called drive assist. The car does a lot of the adjustments for you, making it an easy drive there. As in cross peaks into the distance and the clouds crack a little. Uh, it's not all dark everywhere, but definitely like you're driving in nighttime during the day. Mm. You can tell from here that the the way the light sources are set up, there are people housed up, hold up in their houses, but the streets are this big water puddle going on. Um, while you sit here on this small hill that leads into Ancross, you are mm -hmm. suddenly greeted by the loud tapping on your window. Oh, whoa. There's a dude standing next to your car. He's uh, wearing everything you would in a storm like this, like covered in, a, in one of those oil tarps. Yes. Oh, good for him. I mean, like, pop open one of the doors and let him in. Rather than just open a window and get <laughs> blasted by the storm. Why don't you make stupid decisions? Why am I supposed to bully you? <laughs> <laughs> the man the man dives into the car uh, sputtering okay. as he tries to get all the water off of him unfortunately meaning that the car gets wet uh, who is okay. in the car that he gets into is the question hmm? assumedly me because I opened the door <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'm probably with someone else because I can kind of drive but probably not well you can do it enough for the car to help you yeah. yes all right, the, he 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 sputters a bit at you. <sighs> you're those uh, w w w you're those uh, off-world guys, right? Yes. Yeah. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta help us. So some, uh, you know, old folk be. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me. On the way to help. I assume we're all on the radio now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That blasted. <laughs> That blast of old, what, what's it called, tornado? That blast of tornado just uh, did a whole bunch of, oh yeah. Old man Chester saw that storm coming in and he got his whole family to come down, down to the house to, to clear it out of some of the things. But by the time he arrived, the storm got too bad. Guy's stuck in town now and his house ain't built for it. Oh, shit. Listen, he's a, he's a bit of an old coop, but I don't think it's just to, to get, get flooded and, and, and stumped. Just because he got a little anxious on the weather. Yeah. Can you lead the way? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I don't personally want to go down there, but sure, if you insist. So, um, then he taps like on the intercom. Are, are, are we going to get these magic voice boxes at some point? Because I got to say, it's really nice to talk to people without having to go out in the weather the whole time. <laughs> All things go we well, could. probably. Yes. Well, write me down for ten of them. <laughs> nice. I'm loving the enthusiasm. 
If any idea how easy it'd be to organize ranching, if I can just yell at my boys over one of these things without hoarsing my throat the whole time? Oh, you have no idea, buddy. What are you talking about? Technology makes things so much easier. Well, howdy doody. You ain't saying this... Oh, man. Well, well listen. We gotta go with Mr. Save Chester and his... And his oh, man, I told him. I told him, you know, when a tornado comes in, you don't go back in. That's the saying. Um, with his instructions, you will be able to find where the house is, but much of Ancross's streets are flooded at this point. Going through them by car or by foot is a massive risk. Hmm. Some efforts have been taken to build these walkways between the buildings, but they don't look that safe either. Like, someone had the bright idea at some point to be like, what if we just, like, unite all the buildings and make it into, like, a, a top-level section? You know? So, Can I waddle through? Considering how heavy you are with your suit, probably, but I don't see how that would help the person you're trying to save. Is there it, anything that floats up. nearby? Oh, sorry. You go. No, it, uh, my idea's dumb. Don't worry. Hey, dumb idea. <laughs> it's disaster. Please. Dumb ideas are great. <laughs> I mean, my plan was these cars are armored, right? We can just kind of, you know, barrel our way through. If we do some property damage, then mm. who cares? The tornado's going to destroy everything anyway, as long as we get everyone else safe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, that's not even that dumb. Considering they even built their homes in, like, to be crashed and rebuilt easily. Taking one of the... I imagine these cars have, like, floodlights on them. You Though you would have floodlights on, on SUVs like this. Hmm. Um, he takes one of those big lights, presumably while complimenting how amazing this thing is, and points it <laughs> directly towards one of the houses near the middle of the town, which is starting to visibly fall apart. And as he oh, puts shit. the light on it, some some hand flies like from under the window, like waves help for help. You know, the two hands that go uh, big and wide. I thought the hand flies out like a separate from a person. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's a different kind of uh, f of of light. The situation's even worse than I thought. <laughs> the water's tearing okay, them apart limb by it. limb. <laughs> let's book it. Um, what I would suggest: this thing does have a uh, cable attached to it, correct? I assume that that's a service utility vehicle would come with a cable, yes. Yeah, yeah. well, in that case, in case you have to pull this one out, you know, attach it to the back. Yeah. And then just barrel through, go in. Oh. Pull them out. Oh, so you're going to... Oh, I see what you mean. Hey. Wait, can't we... Power cable or not? Like, what if he did the opposite thing and yoked a cable to the dude so we can pull him out? Through He's several streets down, so unless you got ah. one hell of a throwing arm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Even I can't throw that far. <laughs> Maybe if we throw him and then he throws someone else and that person throws the. Wait, hold on. If... Uh, no, never mind. This is ridiculous. Is that like peasant railgun again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's technically six seconds. <laughs> Everything can be solved with peasant railgun. This is what they don't tell you. <laughs> On the plus side, your your vehicle does come with. A, oh no, wait. Oh, oh, I misread a couple of details. It's only the SUVs that come with the wet bar. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. When only you... one of them has it. When you're in a flash flood, everything is a wet bar. I love, I love that they include this little little marketing blurb. Um, okay, Sir Williard's vehicles are standard Imperial designs built by Link Standard Products for the discerning customers operating on the frontiers. Uh, Here's a joke. Arthur walks into a bar. <laughs> Ouch. I think the bar had it worse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is like, I don't know, probably at least 100 kilograms. Alright, so here's the big question. Who is brave enough that they want to man one of these vehicles to go straight into the water? I'll do it. Because, again, once you're there, even if they climb onto the roof, this ain't this ain't fun. This ain't easy. All right. They don't have to climb onto the roof. They can, All right, Mr. Asimov. Gonna... Yes. Asimov. How about you roll me? Drive. You can add your dex, and you can add that plus three from the car to auto, auto systems, trying to accommodate for your very weird when... idea of driving into this very heavy wind. 
when I punch it in, do I just put in three or plus three? I keep forgetting for some reason. I think because usually I don't think it matters. Out. I think most systems will interpret it as a positive modifier either way. Eleven. Woo! Now that's a good success. You barrel into the water. Everyone watches as the car just <laughs> knocks water up. What a flood! It is difficult. It is not easy to maintain any degree of stability while you're getting pelted by... Because water is orders of magnitude heavier than air, denser than air. That, you know, a wind can move a car. Water can very easily move a car. Yes. You, Towards the end, you can tell that the, this thing is designed for rugged environments. It's not designed to drive through water that goes this high. The uh, internal electric motors and all start to hack up a bit as you bump into the building at the end. Mm. Um, congratulations. You've managed to make it to the building at the very least, but you're not sure you can go anywhere like this. The water is, like, pinning you down. I'm in a spacesuit. I could try. Hmm. Well, Arthur, as it currently stands, your vehicle refuses to listen to your d commands to move it around, and the people up top will probably need some help carrying that old person out. Both. I have a skylight that opens up. I can open it up and walk over and drag them over, too. Can you roll me some athletic strength as you try to leave the vehicle? There's water yes. pushing against the door and everything. Uh, it has a skylight. I can exit through the roof. Oh, yeah. Well, would you look at that? You're having bright idea after bright idea here. If you guys keep this up, I might have to do nothing. <laughs> athletic strength. What is this? Pathfinder? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. You peel yourself from the vehicle up top and see indeed the inside this raggedy building that honestly the wind is starting to tear boards off. You get blown into it once in a while, but luckily your armor suit's so heavy that you don't really care. Um, on the inside are three individuals. An old man who's, like, yelling and, and waving his, his cane, but I don't think you can hear him, considering that all you hear is the clattering of rain against your suit. Fair enough. You're getting played like a drum. Yes. At least it's not like a fiddle. I'd like to carry them over one by one, or if they're light enough, at least two people. Oh, my. Well, if you're going to help them onto the vehicle, can you roll me the yes. leg strike anyway? <laughs> yes. Let's try this. Because <sighs> this old man is not being... Oh. Someone's having a lucky day. Oh, well. the, the spotlight from afar lights you up. People can see as you struggle. It's not easy. It's not fun. But it's work that's got to be done. Erica and everyone else who's standing up on the, the shore a short distance away. You see that he's managed to get everyone onto the vehicle. You also see, <laughs> however, that a big rush of water is starting to gather. And going to pour no. down the street into him if... May I produce yelling noises with that in information? Did we end up having the, like... The winch? Yeah, the winch situation set up? Yes. Yeah. I have absolutely activate it as soon as possible. We need to pull the out quick. I'm gonna put them back in through the sky light, even if it is a little probably wet inside at this point. <laughs> Probably like ankle deep water in there. Yeah, all the yes. water that poured in from the roof and that's been raining in since then is like squish as you sit into the seats. That's fine. I'd rather be squished yeah. than flooded. Anyway, I could drive a fully flooded car. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Willard's problem now. You just redo the interior. <sighs> all right. The people who are standing over at the shore, the vehicle slowly gets reeled in. You feel the, 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 the cold slickness of the rain chill you to the bone, but your friend and the vehicle with the old man inside managed to make it to the shore without getting washed away. The crackle of lightning strikes overhead, causing a nearby building to briefly set on fire before the ice-cold rain just beats it back out again. Arthur, your car still doesn't work, but at least you're on dry land now. <laughs> yes. You can open the door and watch all the water, like, pour out. <laughs> yes. The old man is still yelling at you, and now that you're no longer having the rain, you can actually hear him. He's, he's very cranky. 
he, he, he seems to be yelling about that he doesn't need no no big old metal robot man re- rescue him. I, I, back in my day, we used to do things normally. I can carry you back, sir, if you wish. <laughs> You're awfully polite for, against someone who is like bonking your reinforced ceramic, it's not glass material that's covering your face. That's okay. Only emotional gonk, gonk. trauma can hurt me. <laughs> uh, everyone watches this old guy immediately begins clamoring out of the car, yelling at things. Uh, the man you're with is like, well, look at that. So, now, is there any way for me to try and quote unquote reanimate the car while we're still here, or should we have? Uh, will we have to abandon it? If you want to, you can give me some mechanics to see if you can get it back online. Okay. Ooh. Eight. You can get it working for long enough that you can get back to the estate. You think? Let's try that. Yes. We're, we're still going to be using the winch, just in case. The old man gives you a... Uh, yells at you as he's guided along by his sons back to the evacuation camp. And the guy with, uh, would like to firmly shake the hands of everyone here. Be careful. For what? What's I, ca- I, I, I am still not yet trained to pick up a uh, raw egg with these hands. <laughs> so, you know, don't, 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 don't shake my hand just yet. He seems he confused. Raw egg picking up skill. This man is... I am, uh, <laughs> there was this little book called Starship Troopers, and they used to have these power armor suits and everything. And one of the qualifying uh, things of a proficient master of uh, driver of one of those suits was basically picking up a raw chicken egg with the mechanical fingers without crushing it. I love it. I love it a lot. Oh yeah. I've like I can it. probably punch a hole through a person, but I can't really shake hands with these. <laughs> yeah, I've seen like videos of people using like construction equipment with like big metal claw oh, cover gosh. things and using them to like pick up cards and stuff and stack them doing shit really really fine movement shit so yeah it's kind of crazy what people do with enough training the guy you're with us uh, politely invite you that if you're you know got nowhere better to be you might as well come over to the camp they're having a, a good old time paying some for cheesy as long as there are no more emergencies sure we could use a break. You abandon the cars and head on over to the to the fancy tarp that they consider a tent. It's quite cozy for what the weather outside is like. There are areas where it drips and leaks. You hear the rhythmic mm-hmm. tapping of uh, the pots and pans used to contain the water. And while the soil underfoot isn't exactly dry, it is a surprisingly comfortable situation and arrangement to be in. It's not quite the estate in terms of raw comfort, but there is this human element to the fact that you're all sitting under one big tent, weathering out a storm. Yeah. Some people have, have, have even taken the time to set up like little fires. They're, they're roasting up these uh, big sections of meat. <laughs> and indeed, there is one massive improvised table where they are all playing this one massive card game? Are they all playing poker or something? What, whatever they're doing, they're having a great time. And it's a, it's a huge gathering. You might not have enough cards for everybody if you have too many people. They don't seem to care much about the specifics of how many cards they need or should have. That's awesome. Maybe they just mix together a couple decks. <laughs> What's the planet name again? Gore. Gore specifically. Oh, you know, it's a it's a gore poker. It's fucking sixteen decks in one. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep slamming decks together until it works. It's it's wreck and go all hold 'em. I've got nine bases. <laughs> nine bases. Exactly, yeah. I got so I got a straight flush with all six it's, it's, no, that's not gonna be sixteen, that'd be like forty six aces. Royal straight flush full house. <laughs> I got I got a big hand so I can hold lots of cards. <laughs> this reminds me of the line from Portal 2. It's just I'm holding all the cards and they're all full houses. <laughs> How would that even work? 
<laughs> the character is the dumbest. <laughs> That's the joke. Four of a kind is better. If, I, if I'm correct, it's better than a full house. I think. Because full house is pair and triple. Yeah. Four of a kind is pretty hard to get, though. It's better than people give it credit for. Yep. <laughs> all right. All right. So you're going to spend the, the night here, the, the day, I guess, here, huh? Hanging out yes. with some, some fine locals. Yes, on the look, uh, on the radio, listening in, in case anybody else needs help. As you listen to the radio, eventually someone just starts broadcasting what you think is music. So some of the people up on the hill have figured out that you can keep this thing on and just start blasting things into it. And some of them decided to take some instruments with them. So you just start hearing this nice old country tune on a couple of, of guitars and some, some background vocals go over the radio. That's actually pretty awesome, but question is, is it a one-way radio or a two-way radio? I imagine this is a sophisticated enough transmitter that it works however you like. Like, you can interrupt each other. Okay, fair enough. If, if it's a two-way radio, then it's fine. If it's a one-way radio, they just jammed it and they can't receive any messages. Is that a bow so sword? It yes, it's a crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> Some fucking soul caliber shit. Is there anything you do while you're here, or are you just going to stand awkwardly by? I'm just gambling these people under the table. <laughs> okay, show, show me some gamble as you decide to, you know what? You, you all want to play uh, 52 deck Parcheesi? I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, technically, you could have used education there. But, yeah. <laughs> if I used education, I would have absolutely kicked their butts. You decide to show them what a, what a little bit of uh, space cards can do for a person's uh, card playing skills. I'll cheer for you. Uh, Don't lose the estate. What do you do, uh, Area Reynolds? There are there is like a couple of people who are like looking outside at those cars that are parked and like, what are those things? There's some individuals who are trying to make meals and dishes or just talking about things, telling stories. Where do you go or levitate towards? Kind of engage in some so the people that are looking at the cars because I'm kind of bored. I just want to see what they think of it. So um, uh, you got you got these things that are called uh spaceships, like flying cars, right? You could call them flying cars, yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're, they're like really small up in the sky. They're they're not that small, right? Like they're not like um like a shed. They're bigger than that, right? Oh no, they're absolutely gigantic. If you can see them from here, they're huge. I mean, they're the... they can't be that. Now I want you to. A quick, quick note in case you're not a human, just for all no, you non-humans in the group right now, um, we t humans tend to interpret altitude as being longer than than horizontal distances. So when you look up three meters, it feels way longer than three meters vert horizontal. Um, and without actually experiencing altitude, it's a bit hard for them to gauge that. It's like, oh, it's just far away somewhere. It's probably not that far. Yeah. Uh, they look at you with, like, incredulous look. How does it fly, then? Surely something that big is going to just drop to the ground like a brick. Basically, imagine just a constant explosion going on. This That's how these things are basically powered. Actually, so... you specifically have skill in grav, in flyer grav, which are literally just hover bikes and stuff, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a bit too advanced for these people to just understand. Hey, you never know until you watch their eyes glaze over. <laughs> they, 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 they listen with intent as you, you tell them about these fanciful things, these, these big metal blocks that somehow just stay in the sky for some reason. Why? They're, they're not too sure what all of this is about. Like, why would you want to go out there? There's plenty of space down here, right? Why would you, would you go up? Because there's more. There's more space up there. It'll take you a while to explain to them the current social-political situation of the Empyrean, but hey! Maybe you can, at the very least, get in their heads where the hell uh, Willard came from. He, he came from the moon. <laughs> think, think of the biggest rock in the, that you can think of. He crawled out from underneath one. <laughs> Don't tell them that! <laughs> All right. 
we got one person left who's not entertaining themselves, and that's Erica. What are you going to get up to oh. with all these fine peoples? Honestly, listening in is just the best pastime. Like, a nice little spot of people watching and seeing how the dynamics roll. Oh, so you're just going to listen to some people telling each other ghost stories or, or rumors or, like, things that yeah. happened to them recently? Yes, I love the, you know, uh, quote-unquote war stories. <laughs> From, and and the small town gossip, like drop the gossip, so, y'all. Yeah, so be, these people don't meet up all that often because they live in faroway homesteads and they only have to come by to fix like basic things or get some supplies, so or sell their yes. stuff. So th mm. these are conversations like people who are friends to the best of their knowledge, and they haven't seen each other in mm. months, and they start talking about the, uh, that one time he got stuck on a saddle and got dragged behind his horse for like two whole miles. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's a, and as a, t a tough boy got right back up after that or, or or that one time that a big old water tank burst and and mm -hmm. washed away all of the pies they were making for the evening i tried to bond with like stories from the space habitat and when you only have friends on you know passing ships you're also used to a similar system so folks are talking about being dragged away by horses, and I'm just dropping, you know, yeah, yeah, we did that with a shuttle once, but it was on for a bet, and just like, mm, this is this is what relating feels like, right? <laughs> this is relatable. I mean, there's all there's, there's also positive stories of like new animals that are born, children doing well, or like mm -hmm. the first time he finally rode a horse for the first time, that kind of stuff. Oh. Not to show what a horse is, but I love them. <laughs> To be fair, they also ask you what the hell a shuttle is. <laughs> it's called cultural exchange. <sighs> hell yeah. Just bonding. I love this. Gosh. Just some, some polite conversation. And mm. with such polite conversation, under such good community, it the time just flies by. Normally, you would be very upset and angry over the constant leaking and, and the storm, but when you're sitting there and you're having... Rice, ripe, seasoned stews, and all kinds mm. of fun stuff. Mm. Oh, really good. How long does it really take? I mean, I'm sure that Erica probably gets, oh, might have some part of it that's frustrated, considering that you have to swap out the cards from time to time because they get a bit wet. <laughs> Not a very common card complaint, but <laughs> <laughs> this is why you double sleeve the playing cards. Not they're not. <sighs> Oh well. D dig your dig your hole, but dig your hole deeper. <laughs> maybe it's maybe maybe at some point you can teach these people. <laughs> Empty <laughs> tears them. <sighs> so have y'all ever heard of condoms? Oh, is that ketchup? That's a condiment. Squirt squirt. They put on way too much. <laughs> Cars are a terrible turret to the horses. Did y'all know that in uh, like restaurant service, there's a thing called marrying the sauces, where if you have two half-full bo bottles of ketchup, you just like pour them into one. <laughs> I love the term. I do that with uh, liquid soap, and for some reason, it just separates. Like, shake you know, it? oil and water. Hmm. Man. We just shake ours. I, 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 I love <laughs> fucking people who wish bicycles could make bad decisions. Oh, man. That explains the horse. Yeah. And if your bicycle can break, it's just by looking at it. Mm. Or, come on, we had you had that gift where a lady, where a guy like poured in the food, and the horse ran over and dumped its rider into a bucket of water. Yes, hold on, let oh. me find it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh my god, that horse just fucking decked her <laughs> with the snoot. Only a horse can beat you up with a snoot. <laughs> it's like nae nee, motherfucker. Slay him. Yes. Find out no. a gift, please. We need to see it. <laughs> it's uploading. <laughs> it's so good. Gif, gif, show us the gif. By the way, instead of uploading, you could always just do a c copy link. There it is. I know, oh. but it doesn't always play, and sometimes people have to contact you to download. <laughs> I love that the horse knows that sound like cats and dogs can learn it. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> it just dumps her in the water. 
<laughs> oh man. Call that a flash flood. We use that to describe how a flash flood works. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. As the the course is an educational aid explaining why this is dangerous. At some point, after quite a few hours of waiting, it feels like forever. Or maybe it doesn't. It feels like forever in a good way. The morning comes. The fine conversations make way for the, the, the warm rays of the sun. It's still raining, but it's now this pleasant kind of drizzle where it'll nourish the land instead of breaking it apart with erosion. It will take some time before the excess has fl has washed away, but for now, things seem to be looking up. Things are not the only things that are looking up. We're also looking up at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like poetic or something. When the doom music hits just right? <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 He's having fun. <laughs> All right, the 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 big flood seems to be over now. You've made some good friends here. Hands are shaken. Um, maybe pictures are taken. I don't know how how Snapchatty you are. Yes, please. <laughs> we'll share out space LinkedIn. <laughs> if you ever get a phone, this is where you go. <laughs> well, they'll pass it down through their ancestral line until someone can afford a phone. <laughs> They have one communal phone. I personally love one, one account. I love the idea of you find an ancient ancient stone tablet and when you figure out what's written on it, it's just someone's LinkedIn. <laughs> it's a QR code that leads to a Rickroll. <laughs> it'll it'll teach them a lot about about the culture. <laughs> Did you know that cowboys used to plug their phones into the wires, like into the wire fences, and they just <laughs> Add that, like as a little system with their neighbors. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not gonna get to use this particular picture, but I prepared it in advance just in case things go. It's up. Whoop. This is this is this is the whole squad sitting it out in the compound. <laughs> <sighs> While well, the town is getting washed away. Willard does, when the storm starts to subside, does call you up and is like, hey, could you come back? Yes, what's up? Are you safe? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Everything is fine over here. I wasn't expecting this building to take too much damage, but um, I would like for uh, you to return. Sure. Sure, bud. Yeah. A report <laughs> to the boss. Driving back yes. on over. You look around and see, well, what do you expect? It's Erosion has eaten away at the land. Lots of structures are turned head over heel or significantly damaged or just completely soaked in water. Dang. This was a heavy, heavy torrential downpour. Luckily, however, the road you're taking goes uphill, so since the rain has dimmed it back down to just a drizzle, it's easy enough to get up there without a hassle. Although you probably get stuck a few times and have to peel yourself out. Sounds gross, but acceptable. Well, once you arrive back, there seems to be several people out by the forest out in the state. Oh. Other than the rain, they are wearing fancy suits. <laughs> huh. Hmm. It's also that fine gentleman that you made friends with. What was his name again? It's in the notes. Oh, I have I have notes too. It's good old Jaden. Jaden. Yes. Good old guy who's Jim. definitely not going to be corrupt. Never. He wouldn't dream of it. No way. You see Willard standing there. He's had several weeks of watching you take on leadership roles to, to draw inspiration from. And since you've helped oh. him out so much, he's standing outside looking a little bit happier. You know, like maybe he has some friends to hang out with and feels like he can take oh. on this leadership role without being an utter disaster. Hooray. That's good. Love a growth. <laughs> and we are old friends, right? Yeah. 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 Willard will, We're once you get out, will immediately run over to shake your hands and say, that this, what, what an amazing transformation you've allowed me to perform. Aww. 
It'll be some time before this place is what it truly can be at its finest, but with Louise helping us out with the manufacturing and with Jaden providing local support, it won't be too long before I can, well, start moving and shaking things around here and make this a little gem at the edge of the Imperium. Hmm. He is aggressive with a shaking, by the way. <laughs> Does not cease. Ah. Uh, you 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 can you, you cannot be aggressive for the shaking. You're gonna be shaking yourself. If I stop <laughs> moving my arm, <laughs> they're gonna vibrate themselves. This wouldn't have happened without your kind assistance. Now, I was planning to sit with a simple monetary reward, but I think there might be something a little bit better that you might just enjoy. Hmm? I happen to have an old what? scout ship. Oh wow! I think the mortgage is mostly paid off. <laughs> well, yeah. So ships are fucking expensive. So a lot of them have like True. big mortgages. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, "Hey, um, for your incredible services and for what you've done for me, look at me. I'm standing among reputable individuals of this particular uh, city, and they all look up to me. Aww. All right. I haven't felt this proud since." And he starts yapping up about war stories for a while. <sighs> but never mind me. As I mentioned, I have a scout ship that you can have if you want to. You'll have to pick it up, though. I sent it away for repairs. Ooh. Don't mind if we do. Let me see if I can find the Gore local area map. Where would he park his gosh darn ship? Dude, where's my car? There's also like some, some kind of repair shop at the intersection that just got washed away. <laughs> Oh no, I I swear I parked my car here. It got towed away. Why is the planet Tobiah red? Jesus! Probably has a lot of a lot of iron in its atmospheric composition. I think it's because it's the oh the map key. Thanks. Show me the map key. Oh, it's because it has an imperial prison. I would like to know what the capital of the local uh, sector is. Thank you. I'd say that Tobiah would be appropriate, considering that it's called Tobiah. <laughs> it's the sector you're in. Third Imperium military base, naval scout. There's a there's an indication for capitals, right? Starport base, special name. Oh, there we go. It it has its name in all caps, which Tobiah does. Um, so yes, uh, in order to get that ship, you're gonna have to go to Tobiah. That's um, train. It's Actually, no. Let's not say that. That's to buy. That w <laughs> you don't park your ship in a in a in a big place. That's like parking in the like getting your car fixed in a parking lot. That's a little rude. Yeah, well, it's like gonna be fees and parking yes. and somewhere important. An equal, an almost equal place away is a place called Ashadi. Uh, it's a place where they handle most repairs and starport stuff. That you know doesn't really need you to be at a big place. He's parked his scout there a little while ago. It's only six sectors away from here, and he's willing to cover the cost for you to go there. If you if you would like to pick up the adventuring journey in his place, although he does put on little asterisks of like you have to send me reports, like I want to know what you're up to. I'm going to be sitting here all the time. I would like to hear from someone what it's like on the outside. <laughs> so he can live vicariously through our adventures. But like he's not going to have his own. Work. And hey, he'll send you updates too. Uh, Sorry, how badly you mess things up around. <laughs> <laughs> we left for like two minutes, and the whole place is already burnt down. It's made out of stone. How did you do this? And it was just a flood. Come on, man. Wait, well, you know, I thought maybe lighting the house on fire would make it dry fast. <laughs> so I doused it in oil to overcome the stone part of the non-burning equation. Ugh. But yes, he offers you this. Uh, the other individuals here appear to be like political individuals of the city administration, who I think Erica. Oh no 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 no. Lisa met mm -hmm. up with. Uh yeah, I met up with the like. Oh my god! Imagine if it's. Imagine if it's like Mormons and they all have a limited selection of names, so they invent unique um, spellings of the names to have some control. It's just <laughs> over over. It's just it, it, it is just. David with increasing numbers of A's. David. No, no, no. It's David. just spelled like this. 
Okay. There you go. Here's your Erica. <laughs> Erica. It's a wrestling. A good, uh, uh, a, a, a good name for your tomboy girl, or if you have a child that is a massive industrial robot. <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? Why not both? I mean, yes, you could do both. Hold on, uh, I'm trying to find. Gosh, is there a picture of this? There you go, in high resolution. There. <laughs> there we go. Big Bertha. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Her name is Crushinator. <laughs> and Panda definitely. And she's a big. Play. She she is a big country girl that transforms into a car. Yeah. Is it a I'll comfortable go. car? Yeah. Not really. At least not according to the show. Oh gosh. Morally. <laughs> the moon shall rise again. Uh, what a dummy. What a dummy. Well, <laughs> gosh darn, Indiana Jones music. With the flood taken care of, and your boss successfully satisfied in, in what he will hope to achieve. He feels confident. He knows what it looks like to not make a mess of things. And while he would like you to stay, he really needs to take up his administrative role. Since a bunch of people here, you can tell, are like, okay, so, you want to be a big shot? Well, come on and sit at the big boy table, then. <laughs> talk to talk, now you gotta walk the walk. He's growing up so fast. Indeed. Uh, I can walk the walk if enough I'm unconscious. I'm pretty sure the suit can walk me out of here. And I would walk 500 miles. <laughs> it's the talking part that Arthur has problems with. <laughs> Correct. And with this, our story ends for now. Aww. Maybe some other time we will revisit these great heroes as they go to pick up their ship. Which will totally not be like X Wing like like that X Wing in, in, in on the Otis planet sunk half into the puck. <laughs> Do not worry. Ashadi is not a planet with water because it's just a bunch of rocks. It's like a moon at best. So at the very least your ship is going to be in a place that it's dry. Aww. <laughs> it's gonna be a storm. Oh no. Finally we'll be able to play cards in peace. <laughs> It's, it's very peaceful if you can't hear anything. Solitaire on your little personal table. In space, nobody can hear you scream. Except for your friends. And with that, this game is over for now. Mm. How did everyone this like them? This really neat and really fun. Hmm? How did everyone like Traveler in specific? The system, the game, the concept. Mm. It's very similar to Delta Green, but it's less insane. Like the character creating process, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was so good. Like an actual backstory and the option to have events happen to you, like that you're not prepared for. Like I really love those. It definitely gets you excited and familiarizes <laughs> you with some of the basic rules. Yes. It also kind of emerges your like immerses your character more into the world. Because these are the, like, within the system events. Instead of you creating a character and then finding a way to, you know, put it in so it works. You've already done stuff. Mm -hmm. Also, I really love the story. Like, never, I'm not the one to, you know, bash a good old dungeon crawl, but this is such a nice change. I'm like, just a little bit of philanthropy work. Yes, please. Just make me look good for the newspapers. Just make me Google, you know, Flash Flood. Preparation stuff. Instead Optim of shanking person with broken glass. Blood how bad. Please optimize my SEO so that my first result does not include the picture of me with the devil horns. <laughs> Gosh. Maybe after Abomination Vault I'll think of something s some other fun radical Rex idea to shake things up. But next time... Have it's you ever tried... Have you ever tried doing actual Delta Green or mm -hmm. stuff like that similar? Like a uh, Call of Cthulhu direction? 
Yeah, in a sense, but like in a slightly different, more like SCP style uh, setting. Do so it's play, not necessarily um... just doing with dealing with like, like specifically ancient eldritch unknowable things, but more in a sense, um, how would I put it? It, it, it? It's not just aliens. It's just anomalous things, things that have no relation to aliens or something. Do you play as the thing handler or as the eldritch thing? Excuse me. Do you play as the? Do you play as Elder Green Handler or as it? No, no, no. Uh, the the setting of Delta Green is essentially in way back when people decided to try and protect humanity from various ab abnormal things, I suppose, alien anomalous things. Mm -hmm. It's essentially what they're doing is similar to the book uh, Roadside Picnic. The aliens have landed on Earth, and then they left, and they left a lot of trash. That's why it's called the roadside picnic, because they literally came over, had a picnic, and left over a bunch of trash that is d dangerous to humans. And so it's like that, but it's all over the place. And so this organization <laughs> is trying to contain these things and to prevent people from using them. Um, and then hilarity and horror ensues. For example, somebody might have been just oh i'm just keeping track of all these like d doing the accounting and keeping track of where we keep each scary artifact and then his wife dies and he thinks hmm i'm going to use this thing to bring her back and then she comes back wrong and so he locks her up in in, in the basement and then he mysteriously dies or whatever and you have to deal with the fallout of that for example right stuff like this mm. it, it's 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 a nice little system um, it's the combat is very brutal. Every shot has a chance to instantly kill you, so it's best to avoid combat. But if you do combat, then it's better to like shoot first and all that stuff. Hmm. It's 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 neat because even though I was playing with a character who is batshit insane and loves to shoot people, uh, and we got into combat a few times, we've managed to survive because we tried avoiding it as much as possible. Hmm. Well, it was based on, on COC, which is based on the idea of don't shoot unless you're planning to kill it. Yeah, and it's basically, hey, uh, it's better to run away from a scary thing than try to fight it, especially if it's some kind of monster. Like I said... Uh, the, the COC stand for Call of Common Sense? Call of Cthulhu, unfortunately. <laughs> close enough, close enough. But if it's we ever need a little bit of a shake-up, I can definitely run something like that in that direction. Or traveler, you know, go for the the, the next chapter of these goobers. Mm -hmm. If you need to mix up, shake up something fresh. Goober quest two. Nice. All right, kids. Next week's gonna be Abomination Vaults. Oh I, yeah. I should get that server set up though. Not that I think about it. Okay, I'm gonna go and see if Sam needs help. Thank you once again for bye the bye. game, and see you soon, bud. Hydrate. We got player one. That's we're gonna make that. Kamo as in canoe. Yes, let's do that. Kamu. There we got G hot hit kate, and we got. Maybe Ban. Maybe Ban will be showing up. We're going to ring. And then we got... Natty? That's the name they rolled in with just a moment ago. And finally we got that other guy. Just actually... Just wiggle. Oh, come on, you're still here. 